morning gang um so busy day plan today uh got a beekeeper coming around in about an hour to uh to do some teaching um, so i can start to pick up a few things uh been keeping bees for years this guy unfortunately got stung on the neck uh last week and uh had anaphylactic shock so his years of beekeeping uh are gonna come to an end so he's gonna hand the reins over to me and uh try and teach me from afar so that was a bit of a shock poor fella uh, woke up in resus, but uh, some adrenaline shots and a couple of EpiPens and he's, uh, he's back on his feet thankfully, but it uh, just goes to show you, um, so I'll make sure I don't get stung by any bloody bees. Um, so, having a bit of a move around today, um, I'll, uh, I've got a new phone and I don't know whether I'll flip it around that easily, let me see, no, I don't think I can, I don't know. I'll have to have a play with it, won't I? Anyway, uh, I'll spin the camera around. So, these guys in here uh, are all looking pretty good uh, at the moment. However, as you know, I have had some oh, bacterial issues, tripping over everything. Um, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you can see the shag over there. Uh, there's half a dozen fish in here um, that I uh, have made the decision um, to cull. Um, not an easy decision, not a pleasant decision. Um, I've spoken to Paula Reynolds, uh, we're pretty much confirmed just by chatting. I haven't done any swabs yet. I will do a swab, um, but we're, uh, I've spoken to Sire up north as well. Uh, up North Koi Pond, um, and it sounds exactly like uh, he, the problems he's had. So, I've got the room to move them immediately. Um, I've got fish that I've had for years in there that have been in with all kinds and aren't showing any signs, so I'm hoping it's confined. Um, I've treated that pond with chloramine tea, uh, so um, that's all I can do. You, you, you genuinely cannot do anything else. Um, and it's just one of those things time will tell uh so you know I, I, i'm at a loss i can i can get them swapped i can get i can find out what bacteria it is i can approach our local vet i can buy the antibiotics they may or may not work and you can just throw money at it money at it money at it money at it, and it, it just gets silly um and everybody i know who's tried to do that has ended up culling a fish anyway so I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cull them all. I know some people have gone dramatic and, and culled the lot out. Um, I'm not going to do that. I've got far too many really good quality fish um, that are in perfect health. Um, bacteria are funny things. They they may affect the fish. They may not infect the fish. They can come and go. They're in everybody's pond all the time. It's just levels and things that spike them and, and, and how, how they're controlled. And sometimes it's pure blind luck. Some, most of the time it is good pond management obviously if you're cleaning your filters every day uh, through the summer when you're feeding heavily you're, when you're on top of your water parameters you're testing your water which i do all the time without fail um, get the filters bubbled every day i'm doing one bubble every other day or every third day i'm doing three bottom drain purges the whole thing everything gets cleaned out every pond so it's not a case of poor husbandry it's just pure bad luck um so what I'm going to do uh, to give myself a completely clean system is I'm going to move some of these. Some of these I want to keep hold of. They will go in the main pond and some of them will go into uh, the, uh, the the greenhouse uh, growing pond there. So I'm going to get them out, give them a good check over. Uh, they all look fine from the top, um, but I'll, uh, I'll be giving them a thorough, uh, a thorough inspection and anything that doesn't look right will go in the cool pond um, out of this lot. Uh, and then we'll we'll see where we go. Uh, this system will then be bleached, completely and utterly bleached. A couple of bottles of Domestos will go into here. That will be run through the entire system. Um, and I leave that in there. Uh, bleach, like everything, obviously it's based on chlorine. It has a, it, it has a life. It, it, after a, 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 it starts decaying or degrading rather, as soon as you put it in, I'll leave it in probably to 20, 24 hours uh, and then I'll do I'll fill the pond up 
leave that running for 24 hours, let that go, fill it up again, let that run for 24 hours, let that go, fill it up again, uh, and then I'll do some water tests on it and, uh, and see where we are. Um, and then I've got a couple of, uh, of, of small um, control fish that aren't in, that I can pick up, uh, and we'll put them in and see how we go. Uh, but that should give me a full clear system. I am in a fortunate position where I can, uh, where I can do that. So we shall, uh, we shall get this bowl filled up, ready to get them in. Uh, we'll get them out. We'll have a look, and when I've done all the moving around, uh, I shall get back to you guys. Catch you shortly. Okay, folks, so um, we've emptied this pond out. Uh, I had half a bottle of bleach, so it's had half a bottle of bleach in there. Um, I'm going to fill it right up to the top uh, as well. I know I'll get a little bleach foam, but there's nothing here it can hurt. There's only weeds over there at the back at the moment. <coughs> Put the nets in and the bowl I was using uh, so they can get a good going over as well. Uh, yeah, disappointing really. Um, unfortunately, I'll tell you what, we'll go this way first. Um, I can spin the camera around, but not while I'm videoing. So yeah, I'll have to have a look at that anyway. So we've managed to get these ones in here. There's no marks on any of these at all. They're absolutely pristine. So they've gone on there and um, seem to have liven the fry up as well they're not big enough the fry are too big now and those fish are too small to really bother them too much um so hopefully they'll uh, they'll do well in here we just have to keep an eye on them um i know this is already a contaminated system so no issues there in fact all the systems are contaminated uh, unfortunately i thought it had gone um, it's been weeks and weeks and weeks, but, uh, but it came back after five weeks. So, uh, so these are in there, uh, in here and happy. Uh, so we managed to put the two in. Now the two that are put in here were actually at the show. Um, so they've been in with five of these fish already. Uh, so that's you know that's not a major drama uh it's the kamonru uh the kikishiri uh i think they're the only two yeah they're the only two i've i've put in here uh, unfortunately the uh the big kijaku i wanted to keep uh which was a birthday present off the wife uh has uh developed uh rather a lot of car pox but also um couple of very very small sores uh, and at this stage of the game I'm not prepared to take a chance with anything um, that's that's showing any signs um, there isn't a mark on any of these I watch them through the window all the time as soon as I see anything um, I'm scraping so I know there's nothing uh, water parameters are good nitrites a little high still um, but we're managing that so uh, yeah, a bit, uh, bit of a bummer really, um, but I know I'm not the only one, I know I'm not the only one that's having, uh, that's having issues, um, I'm doing everything I can, learning off other people, what they've done, what they managed to achieve by doing that, um, and what they didn't manage to achieve by doing that, so it's, uh, it's a bummer. It's a bummer, but I've got a lot of very, very good, very, very healthy fish. And bacteria don't necessarily hit every fish. They can live inside the fish, they can live inside your pond, they can live inside the filters. Good pond management, water checks and scrapes will identify any issues caused by parasites or poor water quality, which will reduce the stress on the fish, which will reduce the chance of bacteria infecting them that does not mean they won't be there's no telling where it comes from it gets brought in clearly I have been very careful I have had quarantine ponds this 
system, the main pond was a completely brand new system, completely brand new. Um, I put my fish in there and I introduced other fish in there. It's one of those. It, it, it happens, it does happen. It's devastating when it does. Um, there are fish in there that if, if, if I lost them, it would be, it, it really would be heartbreaking. It would be devastating. Um, it'd be dreadful, it'd be dreadful. But, you know, keeping koi is not easy. It is not easy. Uh, I see people all the time posting um, on the Facebook groups, uh, mainly in UK koi owners. Uh, I, I'm an admin on there, so I see a lot of posts going on there. Uh, and I put a little video out uh, not so long ago, uh, last week, uh, about the sort of bare minimum that you need to start keeping koi and, and expectations. They are not goldfish. They do not behave like goldfish. They are not as hardy as goldfish. Ooh. You know, over uh, over centuries, we have bred that hardiness out of them to, so that they give us something that we like to look at. Um, if you want hardier koi, get ghost koi. There's some fantastic looking ghost koi out there. Beautiful. If that's what you want in a pond, if you just want to look at fish in a pond, uh, and you and you haven't got the time to get on top of water parameters, to deal with issues, uh, to contact experts, and, uh, and all the rest of it, then go with ghost koi. Go with some, you know goldfish whatever if you want to keep koi and you want to do what i'm trying to do which is show them and, and, and hopefully breed them then you need to accept the pitfalls you need to accept that you can invest a lot of money and lose that money very very quickly but that's the hobby it's part of the attraction strangely but it's gut-wrenching absolutely gut-wrenching so I'm going to clean down the system. The bleach is in there. It's three and a half thousand litres there. I know I will have an absolutely pristine system. I've got the pond there, which has got the fish that I need to cull. Oop. That way. That's got the fish in it I need to cull. That isn't going to be a pleasant job. I'm going to do that by sedate. I'm going to overdose them on sedate. Um, I will then dispose of those in the incinerator excuse me <coughs> uh, a job I'm not looking forward to and probably one I will save uh, for tomorrow because uh, yeah, I'm just not in the mood to do it today uh, these these are looking great I just hope they stay that way I hope they stay that way I, uh, I'm doing um, a Vercon aquatic tablet in there. I was doing once a week. I don't know whether that's having an effect on the nitrite. Um, Danny at my boys quite suggested it might be knocking the filters back. I think it might be right. So I will cut that down to once a month. Uh, as I say, I'm boiling every day. I do two boils every day. Uh, and then probably once or twice a week, three or four boils and uh, bottom drain purge. Uh, and, a, and a water top up so I'm testing water parameters two or three times a week in there no signs of flashing whatsoever none at all so I'm not taking them out to scrape them because I don't want to stress them increase the stress levels on the fish they are going to be more susceptible to parasites and to disease and again if you think your pond is parasite free or bacteria free then you really don't know what you're doing because every pond will have bacteria good bad and ugly parasites will be in there it's just how the levels and the condition of the fish that spike weather hot cold all of that can spike uh, an infestation and an outbreak and you've just got to watch your fish you've got to manage your pond if you keep koi you've got to manage your pond it's as simple as that. If you haven't got the time to manage your pond, keep an eye on your fish. Do something immediately. Don't keep coy. You, you, you can't. You're going to be very disappointed if you do. Uh, we see time and time again photographs of fish on the show, on the groups that are way past saving. Way past saving. 
oh I've only just noticed this what can I do about it now I appreciate that people don't have the time to do it I get that I get that and I'm not I would not slate anybody because anybody new to the hobby will not know and understand this but they don't go that bad overnight okay they start with the little red marks they start with things and yes you can treat them yes try and treat with tamadine there's various things on the market that you can pick up uh, in order to treat them ask for advice go to your local koi dealer ask on the groups but ask the right questions at the right times don't let your fish get to the point where they've got no tail where they've got holes all over them because you've gone too far you need to cull them at that point and if you're not prepared to cull them then you really need to think about changing the fish that you keep in your pond and go for those ghost koi or for those goldfish that are going to be much more hardy and will take a lot more um, I know it's a bit doom and gloom this and I'm not lecturing anybody because I am far from an expert far from an expert I have not been doing this very long at all a couple of years at best uh, I just get into things and try and learn as much as I can and take as much advice from everybody and the thing is everybody's got a different opinion on things so you need to learn yourself you need to do what's best for you take all the advice on board listen to other people and what they've done in their experiences but you do have to learn yourself because there is so much conflicting advice um, and it is a minefield and it is difficult and that's what makes the hobby interesting but it's also what makes the hobby frustrating uh, and unfortunately other than Paula Reynolds at Lincolnshire Fish Health there are no real experts there's people with years and years and years of experience who are fantastic and only too pleased to help you but they're fish vets do not have to treat them they are the only animal not on the list a vet can refuse to treat fish I know they're not just fish to us, but to the rest of the world, they're just fish. To us, some of us, they're our lives, they're our hobby, they're what we get up for, it's what we do. I love nothing more than sitting out here with a cold beer or having me dinner with the wife, sat at the table here and watching the fish TV. Even the little jack also likes to get up and watch. So it's brilliant, it's an absolutely superb hobby, but just beware of the pitfalls. Right, I feel like I've lectured everybody there, and that wasn't the intention, but it just came out. And obviously I'm a little bit upset at the, the fact I've got a cool probably 10 fish in there now. But I'll get it done. We'll move on. We'll cross our fingers that these are going to be good. I will continue to do my water checks and water changes and everything else I need to do to keep these guys as happy as possible. We'll get them through the winter. We'll get them through the spring. And if there's no problems, we're in business. Cheers, folks. Uh, hopefully I'll catch some of you at Newark. Uh, make sure you come and say hello and let's finish on a really nice positive note let's get to the growing show 30th of september get over onto my boys koi have a look at uh, the video he's put out have a look at the video i just put out earlier we were down at koi water barn who are the supplier to my boys koi um i don't know whether many people know that so you know we are not dealing with uh with, with, with small businesses here koi water barn are a very very well known very well established business who bring in exceptional fish uh, one of the only dealers that can actually deal directly with Sakai Fish Farm uh, and they are exceptional. They are, see them in person, superb. Get yourself on there, buy yourself a ticket, 60 quid, two fish. You, you, you show me where you can get two fish for 60 quid of that quality from that type of farm. It's impossible. It's going to be a great day. We've got loads of sales there. The thousand toy giveaway. Scott Henderson Coin Hawks has done a fantastic job. He's got some great toys here already. A lot of other people have done the same thing as well. I'll be throwing a good few in. Let's make that a good day. Let's get some presents in for those kids who are going to be uh, missing out at Christmas. Um, and, and let's just make it a really good day. Jamie keeping a coin is going to be there. Will's going to be there. Uh, it's just going to be brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It'll be a fantastic day, I promise you that. Uh, and let's keep it going. It will finish. I promise you, it will finish. Uh, we are going to be doing these... Um, September to April, so every six months. So we'll do a winter one, a summer one. Uh, and it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, there's some good things happening. Um, Danny's Koi Channel, get over there and have a look at him. He has got some absolutely fantastic fish and what a guy, what a guy. And if you need any advice on your pond builds, he's the man. He is the man. Get hold of him uh, and I'm sure he'll be able to help you out. So uh, take it easy, folks. Thanks to everybody for all the help and advice. Thanks to everybody who contributes, watches these videos, puts the comments in and everything else. You're absolutely brilliant. Love you all. See you at Newark. Come and say hello. Catch you later.